we're going to take you through a guide on how to correctly clean and sterilize your instruments and equipment. Sterilization is the only process that kills microorganisms such as bacteria, fungi and viruses. According to health regulations, any reusable instrument that penetrates the skin must be sterilized. Any instrument that can penetrate the skin but cannot be adequately cleaned and sterilized must be single use. That means it can only be used on one client and must be thrown out straight away. Now, let's have a look at how we clean and sterilize your instruments. Your premises should be properly designed. This means that the walls, floor, ceiling and equipment should be smooth and impervious so that they can be easy to clean. You should have adequate lighting, good ventilation, adequate storage space and the floor should be non-slip. The hand basin must be separate from equipment washing and all hand basins must have a supply of hot and cold water. The processing of equipment for cleaning and sterilization should happen away from your clients, preferably in a separate room. And there should be a waste disposal area for any clinical or biohazard waste. Here are some important things to remember when cleaning equipment. All equipment must be properly cleaned before sterilization. If it isn't cleaned first, then it can't be sterilized. When you're cleaning equipment, you should minimize the generation of aerosols. Aerosols are tiny droplets of liquid which become airborne when splashing occurs during the cleaning process. To protect against aerosol exposure, wear appropriate personal protective equipment, such as gloves, eye protection, fluid repellent masks and fluid resistant aprons or gowns. Always use good quality water for cleaning. Water with a high mineral content is not suitable for rinsing as the mineral deposits can damage your instruments. And make sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions when using cleaning products on instruments. So now let's step through the proper processes for equipment cleaning. Start by rinsing off any visible blood and body fluids with warm running water. Fill the sink with warm water and detergent. The detergent should be one that is approved by the equipment manufacturer. Dismantle, or in the case of equipment such as scissors, open all items for cleaning. Place the equipment in the sink. Make sure to wash all surfaces under water to minimize the generation of aerosols. Rinse in warm to hot running water. All items should be dried with a lint-free cloth or in a drying cabinet. Your instruments must be properly dried prior to the sterilization process. Not only can moisture damage your instruments during the process, but if a pack or its contents are wet after sterilization, the pack is considered unsterilized and must not be used. Some instruments require cleaning using an ultrasonic cleaner. Ultrasonic cleaning is more efficient than hand cleaning. However, some items, such as plastic, glass and mirrors, aren't suitable for ultrasonic cleaning and will be damaged by repeated use, so always check first. To make these processes clearer and easier, a staff manual should be available with details on all these cleaning procedures. It's always a good idea to train all staff in every aspect of infection control and sterilization management. Now that the equipment has been cleaned, it's ready for sterilization. First, package and label all instruments before placing them in a sterilizer. Instruments must be disassembled or opened to ensure that all parts of the instrument are sterilized. The trays that you put the instruments on when ready for sterilization must be perforated, that is, not solid, they must have holes in them. Most packaging contains a class one indicator which shows that the load has been processed. It does not indicate that sterilization has taken place. There are different classes of indicators. Class five indicators show that the critical parameters such as time, temperature and moisture have been reached. Class six indicators confirm that the cycle, that is 134 degrees Celsius for 3.5 minutes in steam has been reached. It's recommended that you write the results in a book or register or keep the printout from the process recorder as the chemical indicators on the packaging may change over time. In Australia, sterilization is conducted in accordance with the national standard, ASNZ 4815 2006. 
This provides guidelines for the Australian standard on infection control and sterilisation. When using a steriliser, the standard requires you to keep a record of the following information. The time and date of the sterilisation cycle. The steriliser's number or code. The operator's name. The cycle or load number. The contents of the load. The sterilisation time, temperature and pressure of each sterilisation cycle. Modern sterilizers come with process recorders. These automatically record and print out most of the above information. If you have a sterilizer without a process recorder, you'll need to upgrade or replace it. Many people think that the following are sterilizers. UV light cabinets, microwave ovens, pasteurization, disinfectants, pressure cookers, ultrasonic cleaners and boiling. None of them are sterilization methods. They do not sterilize you should be using a Class S steriliser or, in some cases, a Class B steriliser. Remember, to keep yourself and your clients safe and to prevent the spread of infectious diseases, always clean and sterilise. If you'd like more information, please visit the New South Wales Health website, health.nsw.gov.au and click on S for Skin Penetration Industries in the A to Z of Health Topics menu. For additional information or to lodge a complaint, please contact your local council or public health unit.